This painting demonstration offers two particular challenges, creating the likeness of glass and finding color to represent white. There are no particular tricks for achieving the likeness of glass other than observing the visual characteristics of the subject. This is in fact true of any subject that you may want to paint. If I could offer a little bit of advice to a beginner painter, it would be not to look for painting tricks, but rather just learn to look. White is an interesting topic for painters because it is not a color but a tone. When painting white, I like to use complementary colors to create the grays that can represent white. So this exercise will also deal with some color theory in practice, that is complementary colors, color saturation, and mixing grays. Here is a photo of the subject that I worked from. When composing a subject with glass, I look for ways to enhance the special quality of glass, which is its transparency. In this case, I chose to add a straw and juice. The painting starts with a drawing. I'm looking for the proportions of the glass relative to the canvas size. A rectangle represents the height and width of the glass. A center line is added to help create symmetry. A geometric rendering is laid in, which is refined into curves. I'm using oil paint, which is thinned out with mineral spirits, to make the paint flow easily off the tip of the brush. A clean brush dipped in mineral spirits removes excess paint and refines the lines. I strengthen the drawing of the straw with a bit of cadmium red to make it stand out, and I draw in the shadows. Although I may lose certain parts of the drawing as I'm painting, this initial contour drawing allows me to fully visualize the composition before I continue to paint. Before I mix the colors, I will study the image and ask myself some pertinent questions regarding what I'm seeing. Let's look at the photo. The foreground color is a pale blue-gray. Looking at the background, which is white, I can see various tones of gray, which are both warm and cool, especially relative to the foreground color. As I mentioned earlier, white is not a color but a tone. So the question is how to find a color to represent white, which is both warm and cool. I have chosen to use two complementary colors, cadmium orange and ultramarine blue. Complementary colors always refer to a pair of colors. When mixed together, complements will neutralize each other, creating black or gray. So an important function of complements is that they decrease the saturation of each other. Depending on the relative amount of orange or blue in the color mix, the neutralized color can be either warm or cool. I have mixed out three different grays in varying tones. The first one has more ultramarine blue. The third one has more orange in it, making it warmer. And the second group of grays is a middle gray, which tends neither towards blue or orange. Keep in mind that my ability to judge these colors is always in relation to one another as I see them mixed on the palette. I start the painting with the blue-gray for the foreground and the middle-gray for the background. The paint is slightly thinned out with painting medium and it is scrubbed onto the canvas creating a very thin or lean layer of paint. There is just enough paint to cover the canvas. Now I can begin to paint the center of interest. Let's take a look at the glass and consider the important visual qualities that will be useful for rendering it as glass in a painting. The first obvious quality is its transparency. The fact that I can see the straw above and through the glass is an important feature of transparency. The base of the glass is interesting because of the way that light shines from the tabletop and reflects through it. I add a simple gradation of the foreground grays going from light to dark as I move towards the right. I can see the background color through the glass and the edges of the glass are made obvious because they are a darker tone than what is seen in the center. I start by darkening the edges of the glass's contour and then fill the central area with the background tone, leaving it slightly lighter in the middle. Before we look at the visual properties of the juice, I will show you the colors I have premixed to represent it and the straw. The juice color is a yellow-orange which is dull. There are many ways to mix this color. On my palette there is a yellow ochre which is a dull yellow-orange, cadmium yellow medium and cadmium orange, both fully saturated colors. 
Yellow ochre can be further darkened with dioxazine violet if needed. The first mix is a darkened ochre with a touch of orange. The second mix is ochre with cadmium yellow deep to brighten and intensify it. And the third mix is a lighter version of this with white added to it. I have chosen cadmium red for the straw. The initial mix of tones are cadmium red darkened with ultramarine blue, pure cadmium red, and cadmium red with a touch of white. The juice in the glass is also transparent. Light shines through it, making it lighter in the center and darker towards the edges of the glass. Notice that the base of the glass is made apparent by the darker tones on the lower portion where juice and glass bottom meet. The surface of the juice is quite interesting because of the different reflected tones. Dark tones are added at the edges and light tones in the center. Notice the dark line that represents the separation between the surface and the interior of the glass at the front. Notice also that the edges of the glass break the continuity of this line on the inside and towards the back of the glass. Another interesting quality of glass is the transparent nature of the shadows that it casts. Solid objects will cast a solid shadow and the color of the shadow will be a function of the surface on which the shadow falls. In this composition, the shadow's transparency is made obvious by the darkened edges of the glass, the light which shines through the upper part of the glass, the straw and the color of the juice. We'll work on the red straw, which is also semi-transparent. Like the glass, the edges are darker than the center. Notice also how the straw seems bent out of shape as we see it through the juice. I've now covered the canvas and touched every important aspect of the composition. I could stop here because I have done a fairly thorough visual study of my subject. All of the important elements are in place. The next important question is where to go from here. What can I do to enhance the subject and make it more interesting? The first thing that seems most apparent is the need to enhance the sense of light in the painting. If I want to improve the luminosity of the composition, adding more white to the background gray will make it seem chalky and dull. Instead, I will lighten it with a warmer gray. I have not used the third gray that I had initially mixed on my palette. It is cadmium orange dulled down with ultramarine blue and then lightened with white. I have added another tone under it, which is lighter and more saturated. It is the warm gray mix with more cadmium orange and white. I test these colors on my canvas to see how they work. I've laid them out as a gradation going from light to dark and bright to the duller gray. I then go on to repaint the background. Since I am painting on a surface which is wet with the first layer of paint, I apply the second layer using small brush strokes and much more paint. Remember the first layer was scrubbed in. This layer of paint application is applied one stroke at a time with very little blending. Notice the impasto effect of the thick paint application. The next step is to mimic the background effect on the upper portion of the glass. I'm respecting the visual qualities of the glass by keeping the edges darker than the center. I've also chosen to alter the gray on the edges of the glass by using a gray that is slightly more saturated with ultramarine blue. This serves to enhance the luminosity of the glass. I create a gradation of light to dark in the foreground as well. I lighten and brighten the area around the base of the glass using the warm gray and I darken it with the blue-gray as I move to the left of the composition. I then strengthen the shadow tones. I want to enhance the luminosity of the juice and the base of the glass. Let's look at the photo to study what's going on a bit more closely. The left portion of the base has a dark yellow-orange reflecting into it. At the bottom there is a brilliant reflection of the juice and the gray from the foreground, all of which I begin to add to my painting. Looking at the interior of the glass, I can see the way that the background and foreground tones are distorted into curved shapes as they are refracted through the juice. I refine these shapes on the painting. Finally, I add the rim of the glass and I intensify the light and dark red contrasts in the straw. 
I have often considered the last stage of a painting the most tedious. Details can be a tricky business. They should enhance a painting rather than weigh it down. So I will try to keep this part short and to the point. There are a few adjustments to be made to my drawing. I start with the glass which is a bit off center and needs to be straightened out. I add a few light reflections on the upper part of the glass. I then move to the lower right of the glass and add some more light reflections in the area of the juice. I strengthen the color of the juice. I also strengthen the contrast in the base of the glass and in the shadows. The last needed highlights are added to the straw and rim of the glass. And now I'm ready to call it a day.